Okay, in this video, we're going to cover the user interface of the WebOS 3.0 HP touchpad. Now, right now, it's in a sleep mode. If you want to wake it, you can hit the power button up here or hit the center button down here. I'm just going to click on the center button down here, and you see your screen here. This is your lock screen. Now, if I did have any notifications, which I don't have at this time, they'd show up right here on your lock screen. Also, you have this little lock icon here. All you have to do is drag it out of the circle, very similar to Honeycomb, uh, the way you would unlock a Honeycomb tablet. Uh, you could also put in a passcode if you'd like, or a uh, password to unlock it. So I'm going to just drag this out of the circle here and unlock the device. Now this is the home screen, the desktop if you will, and it's basically, that's all that's there right now. You don't have pages to the right, you don't have pages to the left, you don't have anything else other than this. Now this is your quick launch bar down here. You have five of your most used programs or apps on the tablet. You can change those up, you can change the order of them. All you would need to do is long press and then you can change the order on them. Or what you could do is you could just drag it off and get rid of it and then you have one less. It's limited to five icons down here. Now if you wanted to add another one, you have this up arrow button down here. You press on that and it brings up all of your apps and this is basically what they call the launcher. Now I'm going to actually bring this down to the quick launch bar. I'm going to replace the photos and videos icon back down here where it was originally and drop it there. Okay, And that's how you would add apps to your quick launch bar. Again, only five can be down here, so your five most used, just draw, drag and drop them down there. Now the launcher here has all your apps here. And if you notice on the top of the screen here, you have different selections or different screens for this launcher. Now you can access those different screens by either pressing up here on the title, that was apps, this is downloads, or you can swipe. And now we're on favorites. And keep swiping, okay? Now, if you want to get out of this launcher, or if you want to get out of a full screen app in general, you could do one of two things. You could click on this button, the center button down here, and it will get rid of it. Or what you could do is you can, from the bottom of the screen, just swipe up, and it would get rid of it. Same thing. And I'll show you a little bit more about that, because that will happen to uh, factor into the card view as well. Now let's go back to the launcher here. These are all the stock apps on here. You have web, email, calendar, messaging, memos, quick office, Adobe Reader, maps, contacts, phone, and video calls, music, photos and videos, Amazon Kindle app, Facebook app, and a YouTube app. Now the downloads, I don't have any downloads right now. All I have is the HP app catalog. That's what they call their app store. Uh, Android calls it a marketplace basically all the same thing. You would click on that and you need a web OS account in order to have uh, access to that and we'll get into that uh, either later in this video or in the next video. Now go over to the favorites. Now these are things that you could uh, launch into the or put into the launcher. Uh, this is a uh, bookmark for uh, Engadget, the site. So I did that off of a web browser. I uh, selected it and put it into the launcher here, and if I'd click on it, it would bring up the website. And then the settings here, you can go all the way from your accounts, backup, Bluetooth, date and time, device info, exhibition. Exhibition is a mode on the device, mostly showing time and date. Things that you would want if you have this device in a touchstone charging cradle, you would have whatever you have selected for your exhibition mode displayed on the tablet when it's in the cradle when it's charging. Like I said, mostly date and time, which is if you had this on a desk or something like that, it would be useful for that. I'll just quickly tap on that and show you what that's all about. You can see here it uh, offers time 
agenda. So if you had things uh, on a calendar uh, that you'd want to put on there or just photos and videos, start exhibition down here. And this gives you an example of what it would look like if you have this sitting in the uh, touchstone dock. Uh, on your desk and you have three different screens you can choose from you could go with a digital or you can go back to an analog clock there okay now like I said before if you want to get rid of anything you just use gestures so you go from the bottom of the screen and you swipe up and it gets rid of it okay same thing here now what I did here is I brought it into a card mode now the card mode is something that you can multitask with this device is far superior to the iOS, iPad 2, and the Honeycomb uh, Android tablets in regards to multitasking. You can do a lot of things at the same time, and uh, the card view factors into that. I'm probably going to do an entire video on multitasking so you can see what I'm talking about. This is just pretty much an overview so you can see what you can do with this device and how you interact with it. Now one of the things that you can do with a card, you could keep it there and if you had multiple cards, I'll just bring up another one here, if you have multiple cards you can uh, you know, have them side by side and you can have a, a whole bunch of these together. You can also stack these cards. So what you can do, let's say you have a couple of tasks that are related. Let's just say these two tasks were related. You can drag this card by long pressing it over on top of this card. Now you can place it behind the card or you could place it in front of the card as you can see here. Okay, And then you just stack them. So that is now a task that you have or a set of tasks that are all related or you don't they don't have to be related but if you're going to be doing a lot of work on this device you would probably want them related because they're together there so you have your web browser here and then this just so happened to be the exhibition mode settings uh, I don't know how they'd be related necessarily but just for sake of this demonstration they are so you can toggle between them this is your browser and this is your keyboard down here obviously um, and then you can toggle back to this one just by pressing on them. Okay. Now you can also accomplish that swiping mode or that swiping motion, like I said, with the center button down here. Okay. Now, if you want to get rid of anything, you can just swipe it up and it's gone. And when you do that, it saves. So whatever state it might have been, and if, if you could save it, uh, if you made any changes to whatever you were working on, swiping it up gets rid of it and saves it at the same time. You can also change the wallpaper on the device. If you want, you have to do that in settings though. So you would go here and go into settings and you would go to screen and lock. Brings up a card here and it brings up all of your screen preferences. So auto dim, brightness, uh, turn off after two minutes, change the wallpaper, which I'm gonna do in a second. Enable gestures. Those gestures are the things I'm talking about when I swipe up off of the screen or swipe up the, uh, the cards. Uh, uh, secure unlock. Right now it's off, but like I said, that's something where you can add a simple PIN number or a password to unlock your device. Uh, notifications show when locked on. That means that your notifications are on your lock screen and blink notifications are on. So this little button down here also doubles. It has a light on it. It's, it's a line. I don't know if you can see it down there. But uh, if you have a notification while the device, while the screen is off, that light should blink. I haven't encountered that yet because I really haven't downloaded anything that has given me any notifications on the device, but I will show it to you uh, in a future video. So if I want to change the wallpaper, the reason why we came here is I would click on that and you see I have 11 wallpapers that come with the device. I could also add my own photos to it and use that as a wallpaper, but we're just going to use one of the other ones. Now I had a blue background, we're going to switch to a, a red or a orangey, I don't know, magenta, whatever those colors are. And I'm going to click OK. It changed the wallpaper, and if I swipe out of here, now you see the color of the wallpaper is different. Okay, So that's how you would change the wallpaper on the device. Let me just quickly change the wallpaper back, and we're going to go through some more of the settings here. 
Okay, back into the settings launcher here. Uh, we went over exhibition, you have a help here, you have just type, which is pretty interesting, I'll get into that in a second. Location services, which would tell uh, any of many programs where you're actually physically located. Uh, you have a print manager, which is really cool. When I actually looked at this device at Best Buy, they had the uh, demo model on the floor there. And what I did is I just went to the, uh, I was on a website and I went to print and I was able to print from the device to one of the printers on the floor at Best Buy. Uh, the only thing is, is that as of right now, uh, from what I understand, it only works with HP printers. So I personally can't do it because I have a Kodak printer. Uh, but it's all built in. Obviously, HP makes a lot of great printers, and they make this device too. So it stands to reason that they can communicate with each other. But that's what the print manager is. You have your regional settings, screen, lock, and unlock. We went over that. Software manager, which is basically uh, your apps that you download. And right now, I really don't have much on there. I think there are only three things in regards to apps. I have the Adobe Reader, HP App Catalog, and Quick Office. And it says down here, three updates available. So I'm just going to quickly press on that. And uh, OK, well, basically what I could do is I could click on them up here and download them. Or down here, it says install all. So I might as well install them all. I hadn't planned on doing this, but since uh, since you know it's here and and there's some updates available, I might as well put it on the video here. As you can see, it's downloading one at a time. It appears the HP App Catalog is updating. That's the center one, and then Adobe Reader is next. And you don't have to wait here. You could just swipe up. It goes to a card. And that's the great thing about the multitasking on this. It's all done in the background. So you could move on to something else. But I'm going to click on it again here because, uh, OK, it seems like all the updates were installed. And uh, OK, I think that pretty much does it. Let's just go back. And it seems like all the updates were updated. And let's just get rid of that. Now, as you can see, I have up here a notification. I don't know if you can see it there, but it moved over on top of the screen, and it said the HP App Catalog was updated. Now, let's go back to the launcher here and just finish this out. Uh, you have sounds and ringtones, and that's by Beats Audio. You have system updates, so if you needed to check for a new version of WebOS, you could do it there. You have text assist here, which is basically your autocorrect, VPN here, and your Wi-Fi there. So those are all the settings on the, on the device. Pretty easily located and easily accessible if you want to change anything. Now again, favorites, I can show you how to uh, put a favorite on there, and then the app catalog. This is just pretty much an overview of the device, so I just wanted to give you a feel for how to use it. Uh, one other thing I do want to cover before I sign off in this video is your settings up here. Now you have the menu here in the upper right hand corner and it shows you some of your important information. It has the date, it has the battery charge that's left, it has your screen brightness, there's a, there's a, a, a bar there where you can brighten it or dim it. You have your Wi-Fi here, your VPN, your Bluetooth information here. You can just click straight into airplane mode from here. So it's very easily accessible. You just go to this menu here. You'd hit airplane mode if you were on an airplane uh, or if you wanted to turn off all the radios. Uh, turn on rota rotation lock, excuse me. Uh, that's good because as you'll see in one of my future videos, the, the orientation on this when it changes the accelerometer on it, um, it's pretty quick, sort of like the iPad. So it's it's kind of comes in handy to be able to lock that rotation so you don't, if you're moving around, if you're reading in bed or something like that, you're not going to switch the orientation on that on the device and because that can get annoying. And you can also mute the sound from here. So it's all pretty much very easy accessible from this point up here. Now, if you had notifications, they'd show up here and you could drop them down here. And sometimes, like when you're in a web browser, you could get more information up on that side. But this is just pretty much a quick overview, like I said, of how the user interface works on the device itself. 
And so that pretty much does it for this video. I will see you in my next video where I go a little bit more in depth with uh, the just type area up here, which you can search, you know, the web, you can search the device, you can search a lot of things on there. Uh, we're going to go into the marketplace on the device and uh, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on the multitasking available here and also some of the apps on the device and many more things the camera other things and comparisons to the motorola zoom and the apple ipad 2. so that pretty much does it for this video i will see you next time